Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to set up a phone verification feature within your application using the MERN infrastructure in the Twilio API service. This is really popular within applications to reduce the amount of spam users and improve the performance of your database within your application. And the feature we have here today is very simple as you could see with the simulator where we sign in with our name, password, and phone number. And so what the service is going to do, it's going to send a text message based on the, the phone number to the user with a verification code, which will be tied to the user in the database. And once we get that verification code, what will happen is I have the verification code on my phone. It will verify me and compare the verification code I enter here to the one tied to my phone number in the database. And if everything is good, it should show a successful message. So that's what we'll be walking through in this video end to end from the front end, back end, and the Twilio API service. So enough being said, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so the first step is really simple. We're just going to create a Twilio account by going to twilio.com and going through the account creation process. Everything should be free, no credit card information. And once you're in your Twilio account, you just want to go to the console and click my first Twilio account on the top left there. And we just have to gather the information we need to start using the API in our node back end here. So we have to save the account SID, the auth token, which you should keep absolutely secure if you want to use this for production purposes. And of course, your Twilio phone number, which is unique to you. So if you are based in the US, you should get a free, or you should be able to send text messages for free initially to US phone numbers and Canadian phone numbers to verify. And that's pretty much all the information we need here. You can always buy other phone numbers and also upgrade your account if you do like the service. And there's many other aspects of Twilio, which, which you can use, which I haven't gotten into, but pretty much you can simply use the trial to set up this feature and to start sending text messages for free initially, which is awesome. So once you have that information saved locally somewhere, let's jump into the front end and the back end code to see what we have to do in order to get this set up. Okay, so now that you have your Twilio account set up, we're just gonna jump into a high level overview of what I did for the code to get this set up. As you saw, it was a very simple front end that we used to get input from the user and then send information to our back end. So we're just going to be going over that here. And what we have here is just a simple Expo project. So you, if you're watching this video, I hope you have Expo installed on your computer. If not, um, you don't have to worry about that too much. We're not gonna get into Expo. We're just gonna go over the code really. And if you do have Expo, if you want to mimic this project, you could just run Expo init, create an Expo project, and just copy the code in respectively with the file names and the other code needed. And of course, install the respective packages. But really the only code we have here to go over is we have two uh, JavaScript components here or React Native components that we are using. So we have two screens that we have. We have the registration screen where the user goes to register and then we have the verification screen. So for the registration screen, as you saw, it's very simple. We just have a series of imports here. As you can see, we're using Axios to post information to our back end, and we have some, some states here, the name, password, and phone number, of course. And what we're getting is we're just getting that information and sending it to our back end once the user presses the button down below. And if we get a successful message, we're just going to navigate to the verification screen and we're going to pass the phone number to the verification screen because we need the user's phone number to match them in the database, okay? So that's pretty much it in terms of the, the complicated code on the registration screen. And down here, all you have is the HTML components and we have the, the styling, as you can see here. So I would imagine for your application, you probably want something considerably different in terms of the styling, because as you saw, it was very minimalistic and simple styling, just enough to get this feature to work. And that's pretty much all we have here for the registration screen. So as mentioned, one, once you click the, the, the register button or the sign up button, what's going to happen is you're going to be passed along to the verification screen which will take the phone number from the route. So we use the use routes uh, feature here, as you can see from React Navigation Native. And we're going to have other states as well. We're going to have the verification code, which the user is going to enter in. We're going to have the verification status, which is what's being displayed on the screen, whether the user is verified successfully or not. And then once again, we have a very simple function where we pass uh, Axios to, or we post to Axios in the back end in this case with the verify um, endpoint as opposed to the register endpoint. So two different endpoints there, very simple endpoints. And in this case, the payload is different. So we just pass the phone number to match the user in the MongoDB database to know 
that the user is tied to that verification code. And of course, the verification code that's entered in to the phone to see if they match. And if they do, we're just going to set a successful verification status. Otherwise, we're going to set a false verification status. So really simple, no other logic other than that in the front end. And once again, very simple styling in HTML here, as you can see with these two um, React Native functions here. So we export both of them and we handle the stack in the app.js file, as you can see here. So this is what we have in the app.js file. We're not gonna get into that, but that pretty much just manages the screens in our application. So we have two screens, the registration screen and the verification screen. Okay, so now that we understand the front end code, let's jump into the node back end. So we are using Express for our back end. And in order to start the project to copy this code in, typically what you only have to do is run npm init. And then once you have that, which I already ran, I have my back end project, as you can see on the left there, you can just copy in the respective code. So what we have is in the app.js file, we have the libraries we need we have some config, which just stores my sensitive information. So I put my database URL for MongoDB and my Twilio information in that config file. And of course we have a model we need for our, for our MongoDB database. So going into that, if you have work with MongoDB in Node, um, we're pretty much just setting up a, a schema, as you could see here, which has the, the name, password, phone number, verification code, and verified. I don't think I did anything with this in this example, but this is a, a valuable attribute you can use to show whether the user is verified or not, which will give them different access to your application. So what we have after that is we're simply connecting to our MongoDB database. So I'm not gonna go into too much about MongoDB, but I am signed into my MongoDB account here, which is also free to get started, so don't worry about that. And I would imagine you have some basic understanding of how to use MongoDB in Node. So pretty much we just pass our MongoDB URI, which contains sensitive information about the credentials of our database. And we also create our Twilio client, which has the Twilio account SID and the Twilio auth token, which for me are stored in the config.js file, but really you can just plain text them in here if you're just using this for development. And so what we have initially is we are going to try to connect to the database so if we have the credentials in successfully, we should get connected to MongoDB. We generate an express app and we, we're using a JSON for our express app. So we handle the information from our front end. And what we have is we have the two endpoints we talked about. We have the register endpoint and the verify endpoint, which handle information respectively. So for the register endpoint, what happens is we get the user's information from the request. So we get a, a name, a password, and a phone number and we generate a new user and we save the user we generate a random code so this is the verification code and i believe this function is really simple so we just use this function to generate a six digit code to send to the user and of course add that to the database as you can see here so we save that property to the user in the database and so what happens is once we generate the code we send that text message to the user, your verification code is this verification code from our Twilio phone number into the phone number we enter in our React Native application. And once everything is fine, we say the user has registered successfully. So we say uh, response that status 201 for the front end so it can handle the case. Otherwise it is a 500 error. Now the other endpoint we have is the verify endpoint, also incredibly simple. In this case, we take the phone number and the verification code from the front end that the user passes in. And we handle that by finding a user with that phone number. And if the user's verification code matches the verification code we pass from the front end, we just return a successful response status. And that is pretty much it. So no handling after that. Really, you can take this in many directions. You can add some robustness in the database. So maybe you don't want two users with the same phone number, obviously, to register, and of course, some other uh, error handling as well. And of course, what I didn't do, as I mentioned, is I didn't mark the verified feature as, as true once, ver once verification has passed successfully. So you can, of course, do that as well. And many other ways you can go about making this more complicated and sophisticated. Okay, so once you have that, that is pretty much all the code you need for the Node Express backend. So really incredibly simple. 
And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do one walkthrough of how to set this up. So I'm just going to run the back end right here. And we are just going to run npm or node app.js. Oh. So it is going to run our project on port 3000, which we selected here. So we're using app.use express, running an express project and just listening on that port for our front end. So we have our back end running successfully. So if you get this connected to MongoDB, everything is fine. And now let's just open the front end. So to run our front end, we're just gonna do expo run iOS. So in this case, I'm running on iOS, but you can also run on Android. Oh, so we have to go into the front end folder. Sorry about that. And we have to run expo run iOS. So give that a brief moment there. It is a very simple, lightweight project. So it should just take a matter of moments. Okay, so it took longer than expected to run my front end, but it is running now. And you can see I have it on the right there. So I just moved it to the right and I snapped my back end terminal on the left. And we can see we are in the simulator. So I can just enter a name, a password, anything. So one, and I'm just going to type in my actual phone number, which is actually masked. Um, for security purposes on YouTube, it is sensitive information. But really, if you're putting this application in production, you don't want to mask the phone number. So now I'm just going to click register and hopefully it sends me a text message. So give that a second there. So it did and the text message says 304467, which is tied to my username in the database. So I'm just going to type that in and if we have verify, if we click verify, we should get a verification successful. So that is the whole feature end to end from the back end to the front end to the, the database, which we didn't do too much work in, but I hope you understand the gist of how that works and the Twilio account. So you successfully verified users and this greatly improves the security and removes bloat in your applications because there are malicious people out there who want to target your application, believe it or not, at times to spam it, maybe uh, ruin the database and just ruin the performance of your database or your application in general. So this is a great and simple way, as you saw, we were able to do this within less than 20 minutes to set up a feature that allows us to pretty much solve that problem in a cheap and free way initially. However, you are going to eventually have to pay for Twilio if you want to continue to use it. So it is probably the most popular uh, API service for sending text messages. So you want to consider using it if you do want to add a feature like this in your application. I suggest using it if you are uh, going to have thousands of users within your app and you do not want uh, several users who aren't verified to potentially ruin your app because users in your application who aren't verified can cause a lot of damage. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video overall. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I know we went over a lot from the front end to the back end. And if you are an inexperienced coder, you may have a lot of questions. And also don't be worried because all of the code for this project for the, from the front end and the back end will be linked down in the description below. So you can just go ahead and run that and just substitute your information for your MongoDB URI and your Twilio account, and you should be able to get this up and running and tweak it however you like and to see some things you don't understand and go through it on your own pace. So that being said, we have many other uh, videos on this channel regarding full stack content and other even IoT content. So if you are interested in those things, please subscribe. And once again, comment down below. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy.